Hello, architects. How are you? Just one more speaker before lunch. So that's, and that's me. <laughs> We've heard a lot of stuff today about the sorts of things that you need to become architects of the future. This involves apparently things like printers. Wonderful, wonderful stories about courage that it takes. But I've got one more thing for you to put into your framing for your future architecture. And that is the stuff we're going to make things out of. And that makes a big difference because we've got to be able to have the, the sorts of materials that, does, that, that doesn't limit our imaginations and where we want to go with our future. So I'm going to talk to you today about where I think the materials of the future are going to come from. And these new materials are going to give us capabilities that are far beyond anything that my generation has ever imagined. It's going to take your generation to carry it further. You might know that almost everything that we build stuff out of is made from stuff that we found in the ground somewhere. Okay? You make the aluminum on airplanes. We dig that up as bauxite. We process it. We make the aluminum. Right? Even plastic is primarily just processed oil. So most of the stuff, most of the materials that are out there that we need to build our technologies with, and those are pretty cool technologies, right? There's cell phones and things like that. Most of that stuff is really just stuff that we found. Materials are things that we found. But what if that were not the case? Because keep in mind, that limits what we can do. It limits whether or not we can build a skyscraper higher, build an aircraft larger, Right? We are limited by the stuff that we build things from, but what if that wasn't the case? What if instead we decide to go atom by atom and build a material that did what we wanted? Because being limited by the size that the concrete can hold, that's, that's not the architects of the future. We're not willing to be limited like that. So what I'm going to tell you about are nanomaterials. Nanomaterials are incredible, and it works really, really very simply. You take something that's soft and malleable, like the graphite at the end of your pencil. Right? Most people have seen that, and it's very soft. And if you look at that very closely, you'll see that it's composed of layers of atoms, individual layers of atoms, like a layer cake. Now, let's say I take one of those layers of atoms out, and I roll it up into a drinking straw. That's about one nanometer across, or 100,000 times smaller than the width of a human hair. I roll it up into that drinking straw. What do I have? I have graphite, right? No. You don't have anything close to graphite. You have a carbon nanotube, and it's 100 times stronger than steel. It is 100 times more conductive than copper. In other words, it isn't graphite anymore. The world of the small produces very, very different materials for us to use in our toolbox for the future. And we can imagine doing lots of things with it. Myself, I want to build ultra-small robots. I want to build solar cells that are much more efficient than what we have today. You might have something else that you want to build with it. Who knows? But rest assured, it can do different things, these nanomaterials, than what we could do before. And that's the, going to be the key to our success. Here's a wonderful example, for instance, of doing away with rockets altogether. Maybe when we have super strong materials, we can ride elevators into space instead. So what kind of things can we imagine? This is actually something my daughter imagines. She's 12. She's actually out in the, out in the, uh, out in the audience right now, the mighty, mighty munchkin. <laughs> and she came up with a great idea that I didn't think of. Now, I work in, I'm a physicist, and I work with thermal electrics. And thermal electrics are materials that, if you put a, a change of temperature across them, they generate uh, an electrical current. That's a great idea, but they've been around for a while. And my daughter noticed that her cell phone kept going down every time mom called. Mom's got a lot to say. And uh, she challenged me to produce a thermal electric that would fit into the back of a cell phone and capture power. But we did more than that, because that thermal electric, we could make it in fabric form. I could make it like the clothing that I'm wearing. And so that's exactly what we did. And embedded inside that are those carbon nanotubes, and they are what gives it its almost magical power to become a really good thermal electric. And we can build clothing now. I think this, yeah, there's a movie there. We can build clothing now that generates power from your body's own heat. So this is like the Matrix, actually. It's a little bit better than the Matrix. Everybody see the Matrix? Yeah. Was that an awesome movie or what? I love that movie. Right? And, and you know, they have the point there where uh, with Lawrence, 
Lawrence Fishburne, I think it is, shows uh, the battery to Keanu Reeves, and he says that the machines want to turn us into one of these, and holds up the battery. And that's wrong. That's not what the machines were doing at all, right? That's a battery. Something had to charge the battery up. What the machines wanted to do was to collect the power from the human body. Each one of you, you're roughly a 100-watt bulb. Did you know that? That's about how much power each one, of your bad, uh, each one of your bodies produces. If we can collect that and use it and power things like cell phones, you can, get, you, you can, do, some, you can, you can do exciting things. Here's some of the fabric now uh, that uh, we've produced. We actually know that it's washable by accident because I left some in my pocket. And, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> We've created shirts, and unfortunately, I couldn't bring the shirt with me this time, mainly because the military is interested in it, and they asked to have it to test. So, sorry, but they have guns. Um, <laughs> what else can I imagine? That's only one thing. But, you know, power is an interesting thing. We're talking about using, for instance, we're talking about using crops to power our cars, but think about that. The UN says that Every man, woman, and child on this planet really sort of deserves about 1,500 calories a day in order to survive. And we as a planet don't make that much. So what does it say about us if we take up whole swaths of, of grassland just to make fuel for our cars? It doesn't say much about us, does it? So here's an idea. Another kid came up with this one. The idea is to use the pokeweed. The pokeweed is a berry that grows on every continent in the world. It's drought tolerant. You can't eat the berries because they're poisonous, but you can make solar cells from them by using nanoparticles mixed in with the juice. And you can eat the leaves. So here's a product that I can grow in a developing nation that lets me both have power and eat from the same acre of land. What about diagnose, uh, diagnosing disease? Right? One of the things we've been able to do recently is to create sensors that can go inside a cell itself to tell you what's wrong with that one cell. This shows you some of the sensors inside uh, a breast cancer cell. We've created, for instance, pressure sensors that are so sensitive that they can measure the heartbeat of a mouse and we inject them into you and they tell you the pressure wherever, the, wherever you want to know, simply by reading it through the skin. The incredible ability to do these things allows us to be more accurate with your own individual health, as opposed to just sort of applying the rules that kind of work. One of the most interesting things that we've done recently is the development of a cancer therapeutic. And this is unlike any other cancer therapeutic that's out there. And the reason it's unlike it is because cancer is made up of about 100 different diseases. Did you know that? So cancer is not one thing. It's about 100 different things. And each different thing, you have to have your own way of dealing with it. So what we decided to do was to build a robot. And that robot we can put into the body, in this case, of a mouse. This mouse here has got cancer. He's got a kind of a nasty form of kidney cancer. And what we've done is we've, we've asked those robots to find that cancer. And when we do, we signal to the robot to heat up the cancer and kill it. And then, <laughs> once it's done, once it's done, we ask the robot to leave. And this is what you get. The dashed line is what happens if you don't do anything to the tumor. And eventually, you see the dashed line comes down, that's because the animal has died. On the other hand, the solid line is an animal that got the robots. And the robots did what we asked them to do. And the cancer has gone away. So now I have <laughs> cured cancer, at least in laboratory mice. And as you may know, cancer is the leading cause of death among laboratory mice in the United States. <laughs> now we did want to study, by the way, uh, lung cancer. And we weren't able to do that because it was quite hard to get them to smoke the little cigarettes. Anyway, <laughs> the point is there's a lot more that can be done, much more than we can imagine. I'm a technologist by nature. I believe in the power of technology to transform everything, anything that we want. All of these people were too. Generations back, people just like you and I, that believe fundamentally in our ability to change our world through the technology that our brains come up with. And as we've moved forward, we've gone from people that worship the stars to people that travel among them. 
People that want to be there and see for ourselves. We're no longer satisfied with being told what's true. We decide to look for ourselves. What I would suggest to you is that my generation and the generations before me, we can no longer finish this journey. It's now time for you to join us because it's going to take your imaginations and your will and your strength to finish the work that we started. I think there's a lot that can be done, and I want to thank you for listening to me and for being here at TEDx.